warm congratulations, Madam President. Thank you so much. You are the first ever female president of the ITDF. Yes, that's true. I'm very honored. Yes. And also, you are one of the only four female presidents of the Olympic Sports Federations. Yes. What do you think of your strength? I think that my experience and leadership style uh, was one of the main uh, things that took me on to this position. And I also think that uh, sport in general needs more females uh, to be representative of this kind of positions. What are your immediate challenges ahead? When you are newly elected, I think you have, maybe you get some weeks, month, but not more, then you have to deliver. And I think what we need now is, of course, like everywhere else in the society, we need to restart after the pandemic. And uh, to restart table tennis, this event here in Houston is, of course, one step. And then there will be some other events here upcoming. And then it's for us, of course, to map out the strategic plan and to work together. I had a manifesto when I was running, and I think uh, the priority is clear in this manifesto. We have to grow our sport on the business side. We have to continue to work on good governance. We have to really look forward to the future and work more sustainable. And to achieve all of this, we have to work as an ITTF family. And uh, that is pretty much uh, what I think will be the outline of the strategic plan. How do you implement your strategic plan? First of all, now we have a new team, a new executive committee. So first, what is very important is, of course, to make sure that we have all the skills that we need uh, within the committee, and I'm sure that we have that. And then we have to, of course, create the different portfolios with the different tasks and divide them among us. And uh, what is very important also is for everyone to feel that they are a very important player within this team. What's your vision for the WTT series? My vision is actually that we can now restart table tennis with a lot of events. And as our structure now, all our events is under the umbrella of WTT. And I believe that, uh, well, we started WTT just before the pandemic. It was in that sense very unlucky. On the other hand, when you start something new and then you get this break like we got uh, through the pandemic, now we can calibrate a lot of things and I think that could be very fruitful for the restart. And uh, I believe that the, the, the first thing is to have a lot of events and then we can make the events uh, better and better together. Okay, in the past, we Chinese Tipu tennis fans had an an illusion or disillusion that the ITDF always changed the rules and regulations yes. simply to restrict the Chinese players. I'm laughing because also in Sweden, as you know, we have a very long tradition. Also, the Swedish top players came to me, Waldner, Persson, why do you change all the time? Because they also felt like, uh, as they also were playing on a very, very high level, I think actually that the changes that was made was not made to, 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 to make changes only, but of course every sport has to improve. And I understand the feeling of the Chinese, but I think it's exactly the same feeling as was by the Swedish players at that time. So I think it's a mistranslation and we have to innovate and, and try things. But also, of course, sometimes we also have to realize that we do things very good already now, and then maybe we can go back and, and uh, calibrate a little bit only. No doubt China is the number one country for the table tennis sport. Yes. What do you think of the role China can play in this uh, development of table tennis and promote the table tennis around the world? We are actually very lucky as a sport uh, to have our sport table tennis as a national sport in China. I mean, we all know how, how, how the journey have been for, for the market uh, in China. And to have table tennis as the number one sport there is, of course, very important for us. But we also have to make sure that table tennis still is among the youngsters the number one choice. I mean, now there are so many other things you can do, e-sport, and you can do a lot of things. So it's really very important to, to stay as the number one sport uh, in China. 
and also, of course, for China. But I think that uh, the leadership in China now, with Li Guliang as the president, really work a lot and cooperate a lot with the rest of the world. So I'm not saying that that should start, because I think that already started, actually. But it's very important that we work together, but also that we stay as number one sport in China. Uh, your home country is Sweden. Yes. Used to be uh, the top uh, table tennis nations. Yes. Uh, for example, the world-renowned uh, Wotna is a household name yes. in China. We intimately call him Lao Wa. Yes, the ever ever living tree. Yeah. And. Uh, but we haven't seen any top players since his retirement. Why? Well, I think we have some future starts upcoming. There was a lot of years in between where, where we didn't uh, compete on the same level. But uh, two years ago in Budapest, actually, we were in the final. I mean, Matthias Falk was playing final uh, versus Malong. And I would say that he had a chance. He didn't win, but he, he did have a chance. and. And we also have some future stars coming up. Truls Møregård is one name that you should keep in mind. But um, uh, it's true that we haven't had the same uh, power as we had with this uh, golden generation, as we call them, with Waldner, with, with Pearson, uh, et cetera. But I believe that table tennis nowadays is also uh, much more uh, complicated to be um, number one in, as you have been so good China to stay on that top level. We have been competing in Europe with a lot of other uh, countries, which is good for the sport. So it's not only Sweden in Europe or Germany, but now we have seen the last year's gold medals goes to other countries as well. So in one way it's positive, but of course it's much more uh, difficult to, to compete on that level when you have so many countries that are playing on higher level. But uh, we will be back. <laughs> I hope so. Um, the ITDF and the USTTA hosted the 50th anniversary of Ping Pong Diplomacy Gala. Why did the ITDF host such an event on Sino-US bilateral relations? I think for us it's very, very important and it was also in the past we, to, to, to use uh, sport as a tool for peace and uh, we have our foundation and through our foundation we have actually been awarded for some peace uh, awards and and I think we can do a lot through table tennis. Our sport is also a sport we could play here on the table just uh, with some books or whatever uh, on the kitchen table. It means that we can take our table out to the community and use our sport to open doors. And I think that that was what was done in the past 50 years ago with the ping pong diplomacy. And as it was China and USA at that time, and uh, I think that was also the motivation for USA table tennis and um, CTTA to bid for the world championships this year here and next year in Chengdu. So we are very happy that uh, we can somehow benefit from the history and tradition, but also uh, like we did here to, to make pairs with USA and, and, and with China, but also like we did in 2018 when uh, Korea played as a unified team. So this is one thing we can actually use table tennis for, open doors and, and create peace through sport. Yes, I do appreciate uh, the theme, peace through sport. Yes. As like my it. name is peace. Oh, that's very, very good, yes. And uh, how and why do you uh, decide such a theme? Well, um, I really don't know if it was the start or not, but I, I do think that uh, when we got awarded the first time for one of the, the Peace Awards, uh, I think then when they were making, like now, a press conference or, or whatever, I think they, they created this, and, and I think it's very nice. and. Uh, it's even better that you are named by it as well. <laughs> the United States is hosting uh, the World Championships for the first time ever. Have you had the sense of the warmth of the US fans here in Houston? Actually, um, I'm very thrilled that we are not a now able to have spectators here. But we did uh, try to have table tennis in, in the US for the first time. We had Women's World Cup in Philadelphia some years ago, four or five years ago. 
And at that time, we, we felt that there was a lot of spectators that were super excited. They were going across, even I had people from San Francisco, mm -hmm. from San Francisco who traveled to Philadelphia to watch table tennis. So it's to see that the US market is, is, a, is a big one and they are also looking forward to see table tennis here. And that is also part of our vision because we made a, a smaller format for the World Championships to be able to have the event not only in the big countries, but also USA is a big country, but it's not a big country in terms of table tennis. So this is the first time since 1939 when a World Championships is outside Europe and Asia. At that time, 39, it was in Cairo. So for, for the Americas, the very first time. How are you going to promote table tennis further in the United States? I think this is a very good step uh, as the first step here to, to show such a top event with all the top elites on spot. Uh, but also, of course, uh, some years ago, they held the World Veterans Championship. So it also went out to the bigger commu community of veteran players. And I think it's, the, it's a good thing to do to have more events here. And, and also to work closer together with the association and to see what we can do on this very, very interesting market. Um, here in Houston, the American and the Chinese players team up yeah. for the mixed doubles yeah. for the first time ever. Yeah. How do you read between the lines? And uh, what do you think of the prospect of such a development? I really, really liked as an, at that time, not the president, but an executive committee member. When the request came from Chinese table tennis and USA table tennis, we immediately said, wow, this is something we, we really have to embrace. And, and how can we do it? And we looked into our constitution and we saw that there was one little chance. But actually, uh, the chance was to do it just that day. So actually, the deadline was in 20 minutes. And you can imagine the work at that time when you know it's 20 minutes till the deadline. But very many did a lot of hard work to make it happen. And I was really happy to see it in reality when they were practicing the other evening. So it's great. It, it's a good thing also for, for the players. Not only for the players, but also for Sino-US relations. It's, of course. The, it's the called the New Year uh, ping pong diplomacy. Yes. And let's write new history here with this. I mean, that is the thing. We have the past, but then we also have the future. So very important. Chengdu will host the next year's yes. World Championships. What do you expect from the CTTA and the hosting city? Every time when we go to a championships in China, we always feel that there is something new. And I of course want to see also this time something that how we can develop our sport further. Still I know that Chengdu is a sport city so I'm, I'm sure that the spectators will be there. I mean I have been there myself several times and I have felt the, the nice atmosphere and, and, the, and the big uh, let's say society coming to watch table tennis. Uh, but I also hope that we can do it as big as we want because still we know that the pandemic is around us even here. So um, I'm quite humble in my wishes because I'm more and more um, worried that we have to limit again for spectators, etc. But I do look forward and Chengdu is a great place to, to go to. Okay, thank you, Madam President. Thank you so much, Mr. Peace. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.